Hey y'all, Tom, ND3N here, and welcome to yet another Ham Shack Chat. This will be the last in a series about the Innovato Quadra Ham Clock. Oh no, Tom, so. And we'll take a closer look at the map and big clock features. Of course, if something new pops up with the ham clock, I'll be sure to produce something to keep you all informed. As always, if you have any questions, corrections, concerns, or just random remarks, please leave them down in the comments section below. Any questions, comments, snide remarks? No? Good. There are some common features to all of the maps that I wanted to show you. First off, you are always going to have the moon and the sun. As you can see, the moon down here is reflecting what the actual state of the moon phase is. The sun is just giving you its location. The other thing that you'll note is right here, this orange dot inside a black background is my current location. That's EM89. If you were to draw a line straight through the center of the Earth and come out on the other side, this is where you would come out, off the western side of Australia. Of course, depending on where you're located on this map, this will be different for you. But it is a black dot inside of an orange circle, the reverse of that. This dot over here is my currently chosen DX location and you can change that around. Say I wanted to find the propagation between my location and Alaska. I can right click on that, tell it to set that DX, and click. You'll note that my VOA CAP has changed and I get the short path and the long path to that location. I also get some information about Alaska right down here. Sunrise, sunset, uh, UTC time, and all of that. We have several map styles. This style is called countries, and that's always reflected up here. So I'm going to click that, and you see I've, I've selected countries. This map kind of reminds me of the risk board. Now we're going to go to terrain, and we just change that. And there's a reason I deselected countries, and we'll get to that in a moment. Click OK. This is terrain. This is my preferred map because I think it's the prettiest of the maps. So if I have something up in my shack, I want the prettiest version. Next, we have the D-Wrap, which shows us the D-Layer Absorption. It is one of the three propagation maps that you'll see. That's the these two maximum usable frequencies and D-Wrap. Not terribly useful in my opinion, but that's my opinion. Yours might vary. It's not just an opinion. Click OK. You'll see the process go through as it computes the information. And you'll notice the bottom bar is broke out by megahertz. And this blue is where the maximum absorption is. Associated with DRAP, I'm going to change my moon to DRAP. And it's going to tell you what the maximum usable frequency in megahertz is, 13.1, which coincides with this little bar right here. So you got all the information on what your maximum usable frequency is. As long as you stay below here, including the black areas, you can make a contact. Now we're going to take a look at our maximum usable frequencies. This one is based on the VOA CAP, and of course it's between my DE and DX locations, which I've set here. So keep an eye on this area here as I say OK. Again, we go through the calculations. This is another algorithm, so different than the DRAP, but it's showing you that here your maximum usable frequency is way up in the 30 megahertz range, and the green is this mid-range. The blues here are where I can possibly make a contact on the lower frequencies. Now, another algorithm they use is our maximum usable frequency RT. Again, you'll see it's similar to this map, but distinctly different. The numbers have smoothed out. It's got the same frequency bar down here. 
and you can see between my location my DX location again it's telling me down here in the blue area which would be 40 meters or even 80 meters I turn these off and we're going to go to Aurora Aurora will show you where you might possibly be getting some northern lights the bar down on the bottom has changed to your chance of making a contact you can see down here it's again saying that your best point is right here right now our aurora is pretty low at best you have a 15 to 20 percent chance of making an aurora based contact you can bounce your signal off the aurora but it's got to be strong enough and our final style is the weather map it's always handy to kind of know what's happening in the world especially around your location for weather so this is going to tell you the temperatures again down here our bar on the bottom has changed into a temperature map it's in degrees fahrenheit and you can see we got nice warm happening here up here in my qth it is chilling down a little bit matter of fact you see my temperature is 41.3 degrees right now so if we come down here to 41 you'll see it's this shade of blue which is my shade of blue right up here now i'm going to go back to my favorite the terrain we'll turn that off let that come up and now we're ready to move on so another selection that we have down here beyond style is our grid right now i have it set to none but we can select tropics and you'll note that up whereas up here the square boxes i have the option to select multiple versions down here on the grids i've got the round check blocks and they tell me that i can only select one of them at a time so we've selected tropics and what this is going to show you is where the trop of cancer is and the tropic of capricorn which are the furthest north and south that the sun will progress as the earth tilts come back up here and we're going to set this to the latitude longitude and this is going to show us our latitude longitude blocks so my current location is roughly 41 north 85 west the next one is maidenhead and this is where i usually leave mine across the top i've got an alphabet and i've got the same alphabet down here so if i come here i'm at em89 the e is here the m is here on a scale of zero to nine i'm at a number eight my nine scale of zero to nine i'm right at the top of the list the next one is azimuthal say that three times fast if you look at the shape of the continents the map has changed to fit a standard sized lat long square and that's because this is a projection of a flat earth onto a globe strike that reverse it but we're going to show you what the projection of the globe is by going to azimuthal so it puts me at the center of the world now if you're into contesting many contests require you to give your cq zone as part of the exchange so we'll we'll see how that looks and you see here i'm in cq zone four alaska is one hawaii is 31 and so on another thing that's occasionally asked for as a change is your itu zone so again, I'm ITU zone 8, Alaska is 1, Hawaii is 61, this uh, Southeast Australia is 59, and so on. So now I'm going to put my map back to the way I like it, Terrain and Maidenhead. And we're going to come down here and take a look at these projections. If you're enjoying this so far, please take a moment to pop that thumbs up icon and give me a like. You like me! The first one is this Mercator. This is the Mercator projection. Next is Azimuthal, which is going to show you your globe in a different way. So now you can see the globe. You can see that I'm here, and that's my opposite end. Now you can do Azim 1. This is the entire world looking with a singular Azimuthal. 
And finally, the Robinson map, which is probably my second favorite. I like the Mercator, but Robinson is my second favorite. So this shows you more proportionate sizes. For example, Greenland down he up here is smaller than Australia. Now I'm going to put this back on our Mercator. Now I'm going to show you some different selections here. RSS gives you a news feed right down here at the bottom, like a little Chiron. You've got Namibia coming up with a de-expedition, uh, Fernando de Norona. You also get other news about ham radio popped up here, and it gives you the link to go look at it. So you could go to that and see all of the different de-expeditions. We'll leave that up, and I'm going to put night. This is going to show us our daytime versus nighttime and the gray line between them. Uh, magical things happen during the gray line, and it's beyond the scope of this video, but it's handy to know where that gray line is. And remember, I've shut this off, so our gray line is going to go away, and our RSS is going away. So when you select cities, what happens is you float. You can see that's Casper, Wyoming. It's indicated right up there. Uh, if I come over here and see if I can get a Madagascar. I want that red dot to show up. And there you go. It's um, Morobi. I hope that I'm pronouncing that correct. It tells you where the cities are. And I'm going to put things back to normal. We'll turn our cities off. Now I want to come up here. I want to select my night again. And I'm going to pick a location that is on the that is in the gray line. So I'm going to come right over here. And I'm going to select this area. It's right in the gray line. I'm going to right click and set DX. Say OK. My VOA cap will change. And you can see I'm not going to have a very good selection, but that's, that's fine. I'm going to select the 15 meter band up here on the VOA cap. And that's going to calculate and bring this up. My reliability goes up to 80%, but I'm, I'm right on the edge. I'm between the yellow, which would be 60%, and green. So now I'm going to zoom in by right-clicking on my DX location. I want to zoom X3, recenter this. So now I'm calculating the 15 meter reliability with the map in a 3X. So here I am, and you can see that I am still mostly yellow. Now I'm going to come up here to my DRAP and I'm going to select live spots. Now these are spots that have come in and if I were to zoom out you'd see these recent spots from my location. And you'll note that I've I've gone back here. I can come up here to my terrain and just lose terrain and bring up that 15 meters and it's going to bring, bring me back to here. This is my VOCAP map, by the way, my MUF VOCAP map. But there are some other things that you can do. I'm going to put everything back to normal. So I'm going to select my terrain, deselect 15 meters, turn off night, and say OK. I'm going to right click on my DX location. I'm going to go zoom one and say OK. So now we're going to put everything back to normal. We're going to start by selecting our DX. We're going to click on Reset and Zoom 1. So you can see I'm back to my normal map. I've got my Live Spot set, my VOCAP set, and I'm going to bring one more thing up. I'm going to come over here. I'm going to click on DE and I'm going to select Data Panels and DX Cluster. Now for more information on all of this, you can go take a look at this video and it'll give you a deeper dive. I'm just giving you the high points here. And one last thing that you can do, we're going to click on this little padlock, which I've currently got unlocked, and we're going to restart our ham clock and confirm. Before this countdown gets to zero, just click anywhere in here it'll take you to this page, which is the start of all of your settings. So we're going to go up to page five. 
Right now I have my pain rotation set to 30 seconds, which is fine. We're not going to be looking at that. But I want to turn my map rotation down to the bottom, which is every 20 seconds. I'm going to click Done, and it's going to reload. And we can skip through all of this. And now we're back to where we were before. I'm going to go up here. I'm going to go to my styles. And I'm going to select my terrain. I'm going to select my DRAP, MUF, and MUF RT. I'm going to go OK. And this is going to start cycling through all of those. Keep an eye up here, it'll tell you right now I'm in Muff RT and in 20 seconds I will change to another map. And at this point I'm going to fast forward and let you watch it. And that's enough of that. If you're learning something new and know others who may appreciate the knowledge, please share Tell me about it. with your friends and compatriots, especially on any social media sites you may frequent. Now we're going to go put ourselves back on our normal mode. I'll deselect all of these. I'm going to click OK. Our terrain's back. I want to turn off our live spots and we'll put the moon back up here. And by the way, you can cycle through uh, these different settings if you wanted to. I'm not going to at this point, but I wanted to put my moon back up here. And I want to change my side panel here to just my regular annotated clock. Now sometimes you might not want to have the map up and all of this stuff happening. Uh, maybe you've got visitors in the shack or your family's coming over and don't want to have to go through all the hassle of explaining how ham radio is so cool. That is so cool. We got an option for that. Right here, there's a clock. So we're going to click on that clock. You can have a daily alarm. You can have a one-time alarm. Here's your UTC time. And you can select the countdown timer if you want. You can change the colors of this. Uh, what you want to do, you got a little slider down here showing you the rainbow. And don't don't try to slide it. Just click it where you want. So if you want blue, come over here and click it. It'll turn blue. If you want red, click it. It'll turn red. If you want a girly color, you can have pink. I like my ribbon. It's pink. I like pink. I'm going to put it back here toward the middle. And let's go green. You do have down here the big clock. So you can put this display up. I've got my weather. I've got everything else. You can see this is the green, and that's the same green that I had before, so you can adjust the colors on that previous screen. And if you right-click in the background, you can change things. Let's go ahead and turn that down and turn that off. There is just a plain clock. You can also turn off your second hand, your date info, and I've got space weather up there. So that's your basic clock. Now let's go back in and start filling in things. I want a digital time readout. I do want numbers on my clock. And I want to color my hands. So you'll see what happens here. Other things you can do, you can set this for as a 24-hour clock, which will change this. You can set it for UTC or local standard time. Uh, you can show seconds. You can show the date information. You can go to your countdown clock if you've set it. You can go to your daily alarm if you've set it. You can do your once alarm if you've set it. And that brings us back to here. DE weather looks like this. This is giving me, it's 43 degrees out. I've got my seconds here. Everything is going fine. In short, you can customize this clock in a fairly limited fashion. To get out, you just click exit clock, say OK, and then click exit again, and you're back to this. To the best of my ability, and I am limited, I'm human after all, if you've watched this video and the preceding two, you now have the knowledge and resources to become a ham clock power user. Congratulations. Hip hip. Hooray! I've included links to the previous two videos in the video description. You can also click on these links to go directly to them. 
please remember to like, share, comment, and please consider subscribing to this channel. Also, please take a look at the video description for an announcement of an upcoming series of videos that I think you will really enjoy. 73 until the next Hey Y'all! As always, I am at your service. This has been a Ham Shack Chat completing the Ham Clock series. I'm Tom, ND3N, and I am out. This is the last I'm going to take of you and your nonsense.